Hey guys, it's Hink here. Today we're gonna be talking about a peptide that I've been asked about actually quite a bit. It's called GHKCU. Here's a little excerpt here of people talking about it in my subreddit, r slash Hink. So if you're interested, please join me there. But we're gonna break down basically what it is, how it works, and the actual science behind why it could be really good or actually really bad for especially enlargement purposes. And we're gonna also throw in some general penile health and including talking about how it could potentially be useful in something like Peyronie's disease. So stay with me, let's get into it today. But before we get into that, guys, I am well on my way to 50K. If you could just take a second to just like this video and subscribe, a lot of you guys watch my stuff and instead of subscribing, you just watch each video, which I appreciate, but try to get my subscriber count up. So guys, GHK-CU is a naturally occurring copper bonding tripeptide, which consists of glycine, histidine, and lysine. This peptide has been actually initially discovered like back in the 1970s, and it's been thought to help significant with like anti-aging. That's a lot of the buzz and a lot of these like regenerative clinics are, are recommending it. But a lot of people have asked me about this peptide. And so let's get into some of the data here. So this paper here is called Topically Applied GHK is an Anti-Wrinkle Peptide Advantages, Problems, and Perspectives. This is largely a cosmetic journal, which a lot of this data is, but it talks about not only GHK, but also GHKCU, or the, the actual copper peptide. Off the rip, this has a major factor against using it for PE. And what is that major factor? Well, the fact that, guys, there's something that's called lysyl oxidase, and what it does is it basically stabilizes the, the collagen matrix, the extracellular matrix of your structure that essentially makes up like your tunica, for example, but also in your different connective tissues, your vascular tissue. I made a, a video about study, actually two, two videos about these different studies regarding anti-lysyl oxidase, and when you inject something like that, it's called BAPN, it actually breaks down the extracellular matrix, and in rats, it led to a 20% increase in penile size or in penile length, basically just with using a combination of the anti-lysyl oxidase and pumping. You even had significant growth of about 14% just using the anti-lysyl oxidase alone. So ideally, for my guys that are doing this for enlargement purposes, we want something that is going to be anti-lysyl oxidase. Well, guys, this paper here, as you can see in this picture, well, here they talk about lysyl oxidase, and what happens is lysyl oxidase is actually upregulated. So here's an excerpt here, guys. As mentioned earlier, GHK can carry and transfer copper, a crucial element for the performance of the enzyme lysyl oxidase. This essential enzyme for the stabilization of the extracellular matrices mediates cross-linking in connective tissue. And so it actually says that lack of copper can lead to lysyl oxidase insufficiency and thus mechanical changes in the skin. It's, I mean, it's separate like when it comes to peepees and getting them bigger, you would also, you would, you would almost want a copper deficiency because of the impact it has on up-regulating lysyl oxidase. When we want down-regulation of lysyl oxidase or increases in anti-lysyl oxidase. So off rip, I'm like, ah, guys, like, I, I don't know about using this for PE. Now, this study also talks about collagen. It is very abundantly clear that GHKCU is going to actually increase collagen production and increase elastase. If you haven't seen my video on elastase, you can check it out. But elastase can actually be a good thing when it comes to penile health. However, collagen synthesis, I do not think we want to have. The more collagen that you have, the thicker your tunica, the more difficult it's going to be to potentially like stretch and expand and enlarge that chamber. So I don't think we want to promote collagen synthesis. Said that before. The other thing is I think when it comes to enlargement, we want to have increased matrix metalloproteinase or MMP. Now, what does GHK see you? Well, it does both of those things. It actually increases collagen and actually decreases matrix metalloproteinase. So here's an excerpt here. It says incubation of human fibroblasts with GHK CU increased production of connective tissue elements, e.g. elastin and collagen, as well as increased the expression of tissue inhibitors, inhibitors of matrix metalloproteinase. So guys, it's going to increase lysyl oxidase, increase collagen, and decrease matrix metalloproteinase. So we're like 0 for 3, okay? So you, you know, you're out of there striking out. 
but there's there's more stick with me we also need to think about that extracellular matrix because basically the more breakdown you potentially have of the extracellular matrix the more you're going to be able to expand it hence why lysol oxidase works and so guys what does ghkcu it actually increases the extracellular matrix activity okay here's another excerpt integrins are a family of transmembrane adhesive receptors present on keratinocytes. These principal receptors bind to the extracellular matrix ECM ligands and mediate cell-to-cell -cell ECM adhesion. So basically what that means is because of GHKCU increasing the integrins, you're going to have increased ECM activity, which once again is the opposite of what we want. Hence why it says at the conclusion of that paragraph, GHKCU led to a stimulation of the basal epidermal cells and subsequently increased integrin expression. Well, he does just one paper you don't know what you're talking about i saw a video online of ghk saying you don't do the voice so guys here's another paper okay so this paper is titled synergy of ghkcu and hyaluronic acid on collagen for upregulation via fibroblast and ex vivo vivo skin test so guys if you actually look in the results section of this abstract i actually couldn't get this full paper but it clearly says that it's going to promote the generation of collagen one four and seven now I think we don't want the promotion of actually any of the different types of collagen, but different types do different things. And there's an argument could be made for the different types of collagen, but I digress. So collagen one is largely responsible for things like, you know, the actual structure of the tendon connective tissue and the strength. But collagen four and collagen seven are actually responsible for like basically binding the different types of connective tissue to the basement membrane. So once again, reinforcing the actual structure of a lot of these connective tissues, like for example, your skin. So this could be very good for your actual skin if you're trying to decrease things like wrinkles. However, if you're trying to avoid collagen synthesis for your PP pee -pee because you want to make it as malleable or bendable as possible, it is not a good thing, in my opinion. I'm going to make a video about it. If you want me to make a video about collagen, like let me know in the description. But I think a lot of guys misinterpret collagen. They think, okay, well, the tunica has collagen, so collagen is a good thing. My guy Simtex has an excellent write-up on basically why collagen could actually be a bad thing. And I'm actually going to make a video largely inspired by that post. So stay tuned for that. But if you want me to make it, let me know in the comments. Also, guys, black mask or green mask? Okay, which, which do you like better? Let me know in the comments as well. But here's a guy that's like, oh, I take collagen supplementation. And the, actually, a second user actually has a very funny question. Well, you know, white type of collagen is. And he's like, ah, yeah, I don't know. I just read that it could be good for wound healing. And I also think that there is a big, actually I actually think this is a really big misnomer about like the importance of wound healing when it comes to PE, when it comes to enlargement. You know, that's another video for another day. But in my opinion, you don't necessarily want to try to promote wound healing pathways when it comes to actual enlargement. And a lot of that is because of the actual collagen. So I know what you're saying. Gee whiz, Hank, isn't there any evidence that GHKCU could be helpful when it comes to PE? Well, you know, kind of, guys. So here's a paper here, and it's entitled The Protective Effect of GHKCU in Bleomycin-Induced Pulmonary Fibrosis via Antioxidative Stress and Anti-Inflammation Pathways, okay? So for those that don't know, like, don't know, for those that don't know, bleomycin is a very pulmonary toxic or lung toxic type of chemotherapy. What they studied is that the pulmonary fibrosis that can occur with bleomycin, can GHKCU do anything for that? And yes, it can, guys. Now, there's a couple of very important things. So, number one, it has very strong antioxidant properties. So, antioxidation is actually a very good thing when it comes to penile health and, like, overall health in general of your body. You have these things that are called reactive oxygen species that can wreak havoc all over your body. They're responsible for things like inflammation. There's actually a lot of evidence that they can be responsible for cancer development as well. Another video for another day. But here, guys, here's an excerpt for you, okay? GHKCU was found to diminish production of reactive oxygen species, increase SOD, superoxide dismutase, which is basically a powerful antioxidant, while decreasing pro-inflammatory cytokines, okay? So all of those things would be potentially good for your pee, -pee okay? Now, it actually has very strong antifibrotic properties, okay? So, guys, there are certain signals that are released in your body that says, like, uh-oh, shit is going wrong. And it can actually sometimes start things like, like a scarring or fibrotic process. I've talked about these before in other videos, which is why I say like, hey, don't pump to too high a pressure because it's very clear in rat data, in the data that if you pump for either too high or too long, you are going to stimulate things like TGF beta, 
that are actually in this fibrotic or scarring pathway. You do not want penile fibrosis. Very, very bad. But what they found is that the GHKCU can actually decrease things like TGF beta 1 or even tumor necrosis factor, TNF, alpha. Those could actually be good when it comes to penile health and honestly potentially beneficial in something like Peyronie's disease where you can sometimes have dysregulation of those signals which can lead to that whole fibrotic plaque deposition pathway. Guys, talk to your doctor. Don't. I'm a clown in a mask. Whatever the color is, I'm still just a clown in a mask. So don't listen to anything I say. Oh, Rick, you're not a real doctor. What do you know anyway? So guys, it actually has more evidence here of its impact on, on collagen promotion, collagen synthesis, and actually the matrix metalloproteinase, okay? Now, this requires a bit of nuance. So guys, what they found in this study was two things. So number one, you actually have a decreased deposition of collagen when you were using this in the setting of pulmonary fibrosis, but it also helped out to balance the matrix metalloproteinase, basically imbalance that was occurring when it comes to pulmonary fibrosis. Now, the key thing here is that they're talking about when you already have a fibrotic pathway going on. Once again, guys, I am not a urologist, but if you had Peyronie's disease, you could potentially use something like this because there is an imbalance when it comes to collagen deposition and MMP activity. It could potentially help with that. But I don't think, and the evidence is, I'm, in my opinion, abundantly clear with the other data that I presented, that this is going to be helpful for most guys because in your average guy, it's going to decrease MMP and increase collagen, which I do not think are good things. Now, guys, when we're talking about like cosmetic or anti-aging benefits, like, yeah, I, I absolutely think that there is significant evidence of that being a uh, of a good thing. Things like, you know, wrinkles, potentially benefits when it comes to like, like longevity and other health benefits. There's even evidence it can help with like the blood flow around the follicles of your hair. And so actually a lot of like hair products have like GHKCU. Eye serum will have GHKCU because it could help me get rid of these disgusting bags under my eyes. And once again, even things like potential wound healing effects. So like if you actually have like you had surgery and you have a poorly healing wound or a burn or something, then absolutely this GHKCU could be helpful. But when it comes to your PP and when it comes to actually trying to make your PP grow, I don't think it's a good thing. OK, so guys, speaking of making your PP grow, I have a course where I break down the science and I even break down things like supplements and peptides that potentially could or could not help during your enlargement process. I put over an inch and a half in length and an inch in girth, and you can do the same. And if you would like to do that, follow my YouTube channel, or of course, just click the link in the description for my course below. So guys, like in closing, every everybody's looking for that magic pill, that magic peptide. And guys, if you haven't seen my videos on like, I have a video on like BPC-157, I have a video on like CJC-1295. Like I have different videos on peptides. Please check those out. I don't blame people when it's annoying when people are like, Hink, you should make a video on this. And I've already made like three videos on it. So check those out. But the fact of the matter is, guys, like I don't think JHKCU is going to be helpful. And I think personally it would be detrimental when it comes to actual penile health and penile enlargement. OK, that's my take. Let me know in the comments what you think about it, what your experience has been with it, if you've been using it. Now, if you're looking for actual supplements that could potentially help, of course, guys, Vigor for protection of your endothelial cells and maximizing erection quality can help with things like nocturnal erections at night. Fortitude actually has natural PDE5 inhibitors, like natural forms of something like Viagra or Cialis. In addition to things like Red Panax Ginseng, which if you haven't seen my video on why that can be so beneficial when it comes to penile health and even enlargement, you should check it out. Then of course, things like Shield, which can actually help protect the nerves and support the processes that can help with the nerve regeneration if you do have nerve damage. Then of course, Safeguard, which can actually help when it comes to tunica malleability and support the processes along with the overall health and safety of the actual penile tunica. But that's gonna do it for me, guys. Let me know what you think. Once again, if you made it this far and you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. Man, it would be so awesome if by the time I made this video, I'm already at 50K, but we'll have to see. But remember guys, just be the best version of yourself. You're more than the size of your D. There's nothing wrong with self-improvement, but you are enough just as you are. All right, guys, peace and love. Dr. Hank got the plug on the health, yeah. Got you thinking about your wealth, yeah. In his office, no stealth, yeah. Pinnacle of that below the belt, yeah. Checks and balance, he's managing. Working miracles, no damage. Got you covered, no panicking. In the clinic, no vanishing. Yeah, we're talking, it's the way back.